Living Seed Media brings to you God's Word, which is His comprehensive equipment for changing lives. May the Lord impact your heart as you encounter His Word. For further inquiry or counsel, contact Peace House, PO Box 971, Boko, Benue State, Nigeria. Telephone numbers 0703 0363659 Email address lsmedia at livingseed.org or visit our website at www.livingseed.org Let us sit back and listen as the servant of God brings forth the word of life. like to thank the Lord for bringing us to where we have reached in the course of this meeting, raising agents for and of transformation. And in the morning, the Lord began to deal with us as he asked us to pray. We were praying for several issues. And God has sustained the spirit of prayer until now. I want to tell you that what God has started, He Himself is going to sustain it in your lives in the name of Jesus Christ. For our final charge, I would like us to read a few scriptures few scriptures together we refer to one during the prayer opera in the morning first kings chapter 19 i would like you to take first kings chapter 19 and there are just few verses there that struck my spirit and all through the day I've heard God saying, that is the, the, the church we must rise away with. So please turn to John, I mean to 1 Kings chapter 19. 19, are you there? And there are a few verses there that I want to read, but there are two or three that is important for me to share with you. First Kings 19. I would like to read verse 4, verse, 4, verse 5, up to verse 8. Then I'll go out of that and I will read verse 14, or maybe verse 13, verse 14, 15, and I will get as far as verse 18. And then I will read verse 19 to 21. You wonder, why don't you read everything? I don't want to read everything. I want to read it in segments, because they are in segments. Let's read it. Verse 4, but he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and he came and sat down under a juniper tree and he requested for himself that he might die. And he said, it is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, Behold, then an angel touched him and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake baking on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, because the journey 
is too great for thee. And he arose and did eat and drink and went in the strength of that meat forty days and forty nights unto Oreb, the man of God. Now verse 14. No, verse 13. And it was so when Elijah had it that he wrapped his face in his mantle and went out and stood in the entry in of the cave. And behold, there came a voice to him and said, What doest thou here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, because the children of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, and slain your prophets with the sword. And I, even I only, am left. And they take, they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said unto him, Go, return on thy way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, anoint Isaiah to be king over Syria. And Jehu, the son of Nimshi, shall thou anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Eber Meholah, shall thou anoint to be prophet in thy room. And it shall come to pass that him that escaped the sword of Isaiah shall Jehu slay. And him that escaped from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha slay. Yet I have left me seven thousand in Israel, all the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. Now I will not read verse 19 yet because I want to put them in their segments. Hallelujah. One of the very, very critical things that God said to us before we began to respond to the call of God for these meetings in the past few years was that God said, How long will you mourn for Saul? And I found that for many, many years, what we have done, what we have done generally, is that we have mourned. Every time you are driving on the street, on the road, you saw a pothole. When your car jumped into that pothole, boah! You know, the immediate thing says, Why this country self? This government self? Whenever never takes light. Did you hear the cry? Huh? Every time we have mourned. Even when some of us are preaching, we have only been preaching sermons for money. Every time you criticize the system that is not working, you are mourning. And the Holy Spirit began to say, the way forward is not the way of mourning. The way forward is not the way of looking backward. The way forward for us and for the purpose of God in our time is not the way of mourning. And I would like to say to you, God is saying, stop mourning for Saul. There's something else to do. We have sat for these days. We have been interacting with the word of God. We have been studying. 
We have been looking at what, what is it that God will use to raise agents for transformation in our time and in our generation. And you know what we are talking about? It's not limited to Nigeria. It's not limited to the over 22 nations that are present in this gathering. It's a global thing that God is talking about. And so as we read the word of God, the Holy Spirit began to show me some few issues that I want to lay before you before you rise in this meeting. Number one, I want you to see an Elijah. An Elijah that had taken a stand before God. An Elijah who single-handedly stood for God. An Elijah who prayed. An Elijah who said, God, how will these people know that the worship of Baal is not in your will? He prayed earnestly that it will not rain for three and a half years, and God granted it. God granted it. And it did not rain for those months. I saw an Elijah, a man who single-handedly, seemingly held Ahab and the entire nation to ransom because he was concerned about righteousness and about revival. Listen. Listen. I want you to listen because MLR this year for me and for you is strategic. We are going to see the glory of God not too long from now. We are going to experience the promises that God had given over the years. God himself is zealous enough to perform it. The zeal of the Lord will perform it in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, Elijah had labored. But Elijah had not understood the biblical strategy of a sustainable revival labor. Do you notice that all along that we have been reading about Elijah, Elijah that called fire down, Elijah that uh, did this, Elijah that did that, as, did you see anybody who followed Elijah that you know? Eh? Do you remember that there was one young man that was laboring with him? I don't know whether you are hearing me. Do you remember that Elijah had a young man that he was sending, go and check. The young man was going to check uh, the cloud. You remember? Do you remember that by the time Elijah came to chapter 19, he told that boy. What did he tell that boy? He told the boy, you wait here. He told him, you wait here. And he left. And unfortunately, we'd never hear anything about that young man. Or did you hear anything about him? Eh? He didn't become anything. And Elijah has worked hard. And he was now facing a challenge. And the challenge was that Jezebel brought an empty threat. And I want to explain something to you before I leave that issue. There are little issues I'm raising because Tonight is just a charge and we are going to soon move from here. No matter how powerful you are as a man of God, no matter how glorious the anointing on your life is, no matter how prayerful you are single-handedly, 
God's work is not designed for one man. Are we together? God's work cannot be done effectively by a single man. Suddenly, Elijah found himself here discouraged without a companion. He found himself now grappling with depression. Just after Mount Carmel experience, Satan said, let me just make this final attempt. Maybe I will catch him. And unfortunately, the man of God was caught in his unguided moments. But it is not that that I'm talking about. It is something that he had omitted in all these years. What has he omitted? Eh? He had omitted discipleship. He had omitted the only principle by which whatever you are doing is sustained to raise men. So he said, and look at his complaint, he said, it is enough now, O oh Lord, take away my life. I'm not better than my fathers. When God came to him and said, Elijah, what are you doing here? See what he said in verse 10. He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts. The children of Israel have forsaken your covenant. They have thrown down your altars. And they have slain your prophets with a sword. And I, even I only, I am left. And they seek my life to take it away. I'm only left. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. I'm the only man of God in this place. I'm the only man of God in town. I'm the only one. You see, I'm the only one. Every robot has been killed. I'm the only one. The Messiah mentality that usually overtake men when they don't know how to raise disciples. Somehow, if we don't understand how to go and multiply ourselves, you are likely to fall into this problem. It's a problem. So you know, God was giving him meat. God was feeding him. He said, the journey ahead of you is too great for you. You better eat. But for him, he didn't understand that Camel was only the beginning of what God wanted to do in his life. Camel was not the climax. Even though Camel appeared to be wonderful because he slaughtered 400 prophets of Baal and 400 prophets of the groove, but that was only a beginning because killing the prophets has not totally dealt with the spirit of idolatry, the spirit of Baal that is in the land. Jezebel was yet to be removed. But what was the issue? And that's where my charge that I sense God is giving us tonight is going to come from. Number one. Whereas Elijah was busy thinking that he was the only one, God said, I have done what? I have reserved for myself seven thousands. Yet I have left for myself seven thousands in Israel. All the knees which have not bowed unto Baal, and every mouth which has not kissed him. Can I find out from you? How is it? 
that Elijah did not see them. How is it that Elijah did not see the future? How is it that Elijah did not see the potential, the materials for restoration? How did it happen that Elijah was going to be exhausted? He was going to die. And he was going to just die like that with all the power of God in his life. With all the glory he carried. With all the grace of God. With all that heaven had endowed on his life. Why is it that he did not see that there are 7,000 possibilities to carry on the fire of revival? Tonight I want to announce to you as I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak to my heart and I want you to bear it carefully. As far as Nigeria is concerned, are you hearing me? God asked me to tell you I have reserved for myself those thousands and thousands that have not bowed their knees. In the secondary schools, there are thousands that God has reserved for himself. They are still virgins. Even though it will appear as if all the young girls, they have been violated and that they are, and that they are likely to be carrying HIV, AIDS. And people will come and give us statistics. They will say everybody in this place in another 10 years, this village will be wiped out. They would like to bring us photographs of things that are looking wrong. While I do not argue with these statistics, because it's actually not my business to argue with statistics. But what is God saying to me? God is saying, listen. I have reserved for myself. But what is it that we bring them forth? I'm asking you. What is it that we bring them to the limelight? It is a labor of discipleship. Go and raise them. I want to tell you, as I'm hearing the Holy Spirit speak, that among the teachers, I have reserved for myself seven thousands that have not bowed the knee. You have not seen them. They are not on the platform because they are not on the platform. They are not on the platform because they are yet to be formed. They are the materials that heaven is reserving to bring a change to our nation and to our generation. And as Elijah was lamenting, I'm the only one left. There's nobody. They have killed all your prophets. And even myself, they want to kill me. And I can no longer do more than my fathers. I want to resign. I am completely hopeless about this situation now. I have prayed so much and there's no change. So and I don't think there can be any change. God said, I have reserved for myself 7,000 in Israel, all the needs which have not bowed to bow, 
and every mouth which has not kissed him. So now, please return with me to that verse 15. What was going to be the final commission of Elijah if all his ministry will not be wasted? If all his prayers, if all his labor, if camel will not be a waste. What was God's commission to him? I call it the second commission to Elijah. The Lord said to him, Go. Return on your way to the wilderness of Damascus. And when thou comest, do what? Anoint Azael to be king over Syria. Now I want to make some quick submission on this so that I can, I can get going from there. I want to suggest to you that what God was telling this man was a perspective that he missed. Do you know why I say it was a perspective? As at the time that God was speaking to Elijah, Azael was not yet born. Are we together? Azael was not yet anything. And he never even come across that Azael. But I will be explaining to you what is it that God was saying to him. That I sense God is saying to me and to you tonight before we go from here. I sense that what God was telling him is that listen what you ought to be doing if you actually want to deal with all these problems is to begin to do what? to raise men as if God is saying there is an Azael that is still inside the womb that you need to start looking for. And there are men and women sitting in this meeting and lying in different parts of our professions. Several of them are in the universities. Some are presently in the primary schools. Who God has mentioned their name as agents for transformation and they needed to be what? anointed God was saying to him when you come anoint Isaiah to be king over Syria and Jehu the son of Nimshi shall thou anoint to be king over Israel I was rushing to find where Jehu uh, was and I found that that Jehu nobody actually saw him all through the days of Elijah it was Elisha and I think Elisha was the one that actually anointed Isaiah in chapter 8 and in chapter 9 Jehu came to the limelight of second kings many 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 years after what is the perspective God is saying to me I hear God saying are you looking for transformation if you look for transformation in 20 years time start to anoint men for it today are you hearing me if you are seeking a turnaround Don't worry about the Jezebel that is making noise. Don't waste your time about Ahab that is going to die out. Occupy yourself. Go and anoint Isaiah over Syria. 
Let me tell you that there was a king in, 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 in Syria by the time God was speaking. Was there a king? There was. There was a king over Israel. Actually, Ahab was a current king over Israel. And God was saying, go and anoint Jehu. Jehu that was not yet born. What was God saying to him? That many, many times we don't understand biblical strategy for transformation. The strategy of God for transformation is not to keep money for the present decay. It's to look ahead and look at lives that God is preserving and reserving for his work. And God said, And you will anoint Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel Mehola. You will anoint him to be prophet in your room. Have we followed me to that point? And the Bible says, It will come to pass that him that escapes the sword of Isaiah, and I was saying, what does that mean? It looks to me as if God is saying, Look, it is possible that someone will escape the sword of Isaiah. That when Isaiah will be laboring, some people may not be caught by Isaiah. But Jehu will catch them. And the one that Jehu did not catch, Elisha will catch them. And I'm saying, so Lord, what does that mean? And this is why I'm desiring that before we rise, to leave this meeting and to pray and to go. We need to take what God is telling you to do seriously. If I were to be checking do you know that some of us it was at the secondary school through the ministry of FCS that the sword of the Lord came on your life. How many of you were like that? Let me see your hand up. It was during the ministry of scripture union when you were in secondary school that the sword of the Lord caught you and that's when you were recruited. Let me see your hand up. All right. They are sizable. How many of you did not meet the sword in the secondary school, but it was when you went to higher institution, maybe at school of nursing or the university, and they were doing squash party? That's when Jesus arrested you. Let me see your hand up. Hallelujah. Now, let me now see. Those of you that escaped. You escaped in the secondary school. You escaped in the university. And it was when you went for NYC. Or when you got job. They were doing full gospel business, meant something. And somebody invited you and you thought they were inviting you for a business. And you went there. And that's where your life was caught. And I see your hand up. All right. Did you see, as I'm asking, the numbers were reduced? Eh? That's what I want to say, say to you. Several lives that God is intending to use for His glory, He allows them to pass through different, different swords. And this is where your responsibility to take a stand in your profession comes in. I wish to say that the secondary school teachers that are here, may those children not escape your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. Was it yesterday, mom, that somebody was telling us a story of one of our brothers, one of our brothers here, maybe he's in the meeting, his wife, 
his wife right there in Anyagba here where you don't expect terrible things to happen some people broke into his house we don't know what they are looking for they are not they, didn't, it's, they were not whether they wanted to take money or whatever then they met the wife our beloved sister and these boys young men they gave her two options what were the two options that she would either agree for them those boys to rape her to sleep with her or for her first son to sleep with her and they were doing this at gunpoint that's not the story I want to tell you I want to just show you something so she said I'm not going to make any choice out of the two none of it is a choice so argument started as they were talking 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 we don't know what happened one of the men one of these boys something came and said ah let's leave this woman alone when we were in the school she used to advise us she used to advise us she has advised us so much when we were in the secondary school because she was their teacher let's leave her alone let's just go that's how God turned their wickedness and the sister escaped do you know that some of the children that you have not allowed to experience the sword in your hand they may confront you they may be the one to rape your daughter they may be the one to scatter your life tomorrow suddenly they remembered the ministry of the word of God she used to give to them when they were in school and as if the Holy Spirit just gripped that boy's conscience and said how can you do this that's how they left that's how they left you don't expect such wickedness but that's what it is and they were boys they were girls that escaped your sword I use the word that they escaped I do hope that you drew the sword so tonight the Holy Spirit is saying go on your way as you return for brother Elijah he was going back to the wilderness of Damascus you may be going back to uh, where I thought you would mention where you are going back to tomorrow I hear God say on your way there is an Isaiah that you should anoint yesterday I was talking to our royal fathers I said were they once upon a time babies they said yes were they once upon a time in the secondary school they said yes did anybody see a king in their face when they were playing in the mud most people did it but there are materials here for what God wants to do not only in Nigeria but in Africa and all over the world but what is our responsibility tonight God said do what on your way and I want you to take note on your way there are a few words I want to put before you as you are going. 
on your way. There are men that God has positioned on your way. What are you supposed to do to them? Eh? Anoint them. When I first saw the word anoint, the first question that comes to my mind is this general new, new anointing that people are doing nowadays that you just go somewhere, you just carry oil and pour on somebody's head. It was I saw, as I saw the way Elijah was going to respond, that I saw that when God used the word anoint Isaiah, God actually was not talking about pour oil on his head. God was actually talking about disciple him. Because I didn't see him meeting Isaiah. I didn't see him meeting Jehu. Whom did he meet? He met Elisha. But when he met Elisha, I thought he would just say, God said, I should anoint you. No. What did he do? He only cast his mantle of discipleship on that man's head. And as you saw, Brate was a led us in the morning. That began a very intensive, harsh, harsh discipleship that Elijah put Elisha through for 14 years. He was following. So when God said, Anoint Elisha, I thought it was to be done in one day or it was to be done in one hour. But I now saw that this thing, this instruction was a labor on Elisha's life for him to carry the anointing. On your way. There are people on your way. Eh? On your way of business, there are people. On your way in your profession, there are people. On your way in the community, there are people. On your way in the things that you are doing ordinarily, when you come, he said, and when thou comest, and I was wondering to where. Did you see that sometimes you read King James Bible and it's, it looks confusing, but it's very deliberate. And when thou comest, anoint Isaiah to be the king over Syria. I'm asking, when you come here, where? As far as I'm concerned, I hear God saying, you will come to meet people. You will come in contact with people. When you come in contact with Isaiah, anoint him. Even though there is a king that is in, in Syria already, yet anoint him because he is the one for the future. As you are going from this meeting, on your way, you will meet some Isaiahs. Anoint them. Hallelujah. On your way, in the things that you are doing. Now, and I want to tell you that there are people that it is only you that you will meet. I will never meet them. I have been preaching all over. But there are people that it's only when they come to your office for your business, for your profession, that you will meet them. And I will not meet them. And you are the one to anoint them. You are the one, by the grace of God, to set them on fire. Don't let them escape your sword. Tell God, Lord, as I'm going out of Boko, I will no more mourn for United Kingdom. I will be ready to anoint Isaiah. Hallelujah. And God will bring them your way. Some of them may not look likely. Some of them may not carry anything that makes it look as if there will be anything, but there will be something. 
Those of you that are something today, 10, 20 years ago, it doesn't look like it will be something. Am I right? Excuse me. When you come in, you will come in contact with some Azaels. Those Azaels may be in your class as a class teacher. Anoint them. Hallelujah. For this commission that God is giving you, as you go from here, God will bring men on your way. I want you to see beyond what you are seeing today. I want you to see the future. There's a future in the life of every man that you meet. Don't let them escape your sword. Hallelujah. But I want to conclude by reminding you that God said if one escape Azael, he may not escape Jehu. If you escape Jehu, Elisha will can, counteract it. Now I wish that every one of you you will stand in your own duty posts. That if somebody should escape the pastor, because there are people that have come to church and no matter what the pastor has preached, they have escaped. And it is in the hospital when they are sick that you, a nurse, has been positioned by God to strike that life so that it doesn't escape. Praise the Lord. Yet, I have left for myself 7,000 men in Israel that did not do what? They have not bowed unto Baal. And every mouth have not kissed Baal. They are still there. But how will you bring them forth? You will bring them forth by a deliberate labor of discipleship. May God help you in the name of Jesus. So, he departed thence and found Elisha. May God help you to find your Elishas. If he had not found Elisha, are you hearing me? If he had not found Elisha, I wonder how Elijah would have got to heaven. I wonder whether he will have finished his assignment on earth because it was Elisha that eventually anointed Isaiah, eventually brought up Jehu. You will pray tonight, Father, as I'm going from here, help me to find my Elisha. Help my life not to miss those that must benefit from the grace that you have placed in my life. God will do it in the name of Jesus Christ. Turn with me to Act chapter 18. Verse 9 and verse 10 up to verse 11. Then spake the Lord to Paul in the night by a vision. Don't be afraid. But speak and hold not your peace. For I am with you. And no man shall set on you to hurt you. For what? I have much people. Where? In this city. I'm hearing the Lord say, I have much people in this city. I have much people, much people who have not bowed their knees. They are confused because nobody has taught them. Nobody has reached out to them. Nobody has shown compassion to them. 
They are doing what they are doing because nobody has said, let me show you the way of the Lord. Do not be afraid. Speak and hold not your peace. I am with you. No man shall hurt you because I have much people. Where? In this city. It sounded to me like what God told Elijah. Yet I have 7,000. Can I report to you that it was after it was after that chapter 19 in the book of First Kings that all the schools of prophets that Elijah now established were established. They were the things he was doing in response. I imagine that maybe he was looking for Isaiah and looking for Jehu. He said, maybe let's just go a prophet for them. But we were noting yesterday that what God wanted him to do was more personal of pouring his life on someone else. May the Lord help each one of you as you go from here. But how are we going to respond? Number one, on your way. The first thing I want you to know is that right on your path, God has positioned men for you to affect. I don't know if God is going to call you out of your path to go and do something. Maybe God may do that. But I'm sensing that the first place where you will meet your Isaiahs, where you come in touch with your Elishas, they are on your path. May God help us in the name of Jesus Christ. As we conclude tonight, it is in the place where the Lord has placed you that you will fulfill the first consignment of this racing of men for God. You are going to make a commitment tonight and say, Father, you have shown me the curriculum. You have given me the objective, Christ in you, the hope of glory. You have given me the content, the syllabus, the message, Christ and Him crucified. And you have told me that it must be in all wisdom. Now, Lord, I want to go. As I rise to go from this meeting, I'm going to be fruitful. I'm going to multiply. I thank God that Elijah went and found Elisha. And that marked the beginning of the future. Brothers and sisters, as you have come, and as we have come to this point, what was Elijah going to use to raise Elisha? Who knows? It was the life he carried. It was what God has done in his life that he can use to help someone else. As you go from here, your life is the first environment that can bring the transformation agents. Will you please take heed to your life? All the things that the Holy Spirit has shown us, all the things that the Holy Spirit has told us to do, is asking, do not be afraid. But speak and hold not your peace. I am with you. No man will set you to do you a hurt. For I have much people in this city. Finally, Matthew 28. And I just read it. And I ask you to join me in prayer tonight. And Jesus came and spoke to them. Verse 18. All power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. Go ye therefore and teach 
Do what? Teach all nations. Go make disciples of all nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you. Once in a month. Eh? I am with you occasionally. I am with you when you are feeling serious. Eh? I thought I'm reading the Bible. No, I'm not reading. And lo, I am with you always. Even unto the end of the world. What do you say to that? Are we going to have transformation in Nigeria? Are we going to have transformation in Ghana? Do you think the number of people that came from Liberia is too small to bring transformation to that country? No. As you go on your way, there is an Isaiah, there is a Jehu, and there is an Elisha. May the Lord help you to get in touch with them. And when you come unto them, anoint them. And for us, what God is saying is that teach them. Instruct them. Bring them to light, limelight. And God will honor his word in your mouth. In the name of Jesus. If you stand in this meeting tonight and Jesus is been saying to you, I have a plan for you, but you have not allowed me to walk in your life. There's a future before you. He said, I know the plans that I have for you. Plans for good and not for evil. To give you an expected end. But unless, unless he brings you to his quiver, there's not much he can do with a life that has not been surrendered to him. This being the last night of this meeting and this, the final church, I dare say, don't leave Boko unless God has done something to change the man inside of you. Several people have made decisions. But it's possible that there's somebody here tonight. Who has not said yes. Deliberately to the Lord. Don't allow us to share the grace. Until you make your life right. With the Savior tonight. There's a future. There's something that God has seen about you. For which he has brought you here. Can I ask you tonight? Don't allow this moment to pass. Even if that's the last thing I must do before we share the grace. We cannot afford that you will sneak out of this place. And your life is not right with the Savior. As we will be crying to God. There will be an opportunity and if you are stepping out and say, God, how can I be in this great meeting? The Holy Ghost was moving and my heart was, was as hard as a stone. Take away the stony heart from me. Change my story. Will you please stand up with me as we pray together tonight? Let's pray. Please stand before the Lord. You will soon go on your way. You will take your way. You see, I have prayed for politicians. I have prayed for uh, royal fathers. We have prayed for uh, men of the judiciary and learned friends. We have spoken to God about different people, different segments, because there's going to be a restoration. There's going to be revival. 
God is going to remember us. Now, but as you go on your way, you have a role to play. You have a role to play. I have 7,000 that have not bowed their knees. Can you begin to fish them out for God? In the school where you are teaching, in the hospital where you are working, in the university where you are a lecturer, can you begin to fish them out and say, Father, they will not escape my hand. They will not escape my sword. The armed robbers of today, they were students of yesterday that nobody reached to them while they were in school. Ask God, give me another opportunity to do what is right. Let's pray. Please lift up your heart to God and say, Lord, going from Boko this year, I'm going to make a difference. Going from Boko this year, I'm going to strike my generation. I'm going to be an agent of transformation. Some of you, you are going to different aspects of life. And on your way, on your way, there's an Azai. God will give you a perspective for their lives. Now, those of you that are, see you stepping out, is it because you cannot afford to leave Boko with an unbroken heart? Is it because the Holy Spirit is saying to you, everything has been done, and yet you have remained undone? At this final hour, make your life right with God. Please lift up your hand as we are praying, we are praying, we are praying. I want to tell God, Lord, as I'm going from Boko, I'm going to make a difference. You have given me the clarity of what to go and do. The message is clear. The environment, the solvent you have shown me. The issues of discipleship. I don't want to labor and die. I don't just want to be the Elijah who prayed and prayed and prayed and he, he was going to just die like that. Because discipleship was omitted. Please pray and say, Lord, as I go out of Boko this year, send me forth as an agent of transformation. Thank you, Lord. Send me forth as your servant. I'm going to make a difference. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Friends, those of you that are coming out, are you saying, I cannot leave this book unless something deliberate has happened to my heart? God bless you. Just talk to God. Just talk to God for yourself now and say, Lord, help me. Whatever it is that makes that stubbornness, tell God to uproot it today. This is being the final moment and somebody is gate crashing and say, I must not let the Lord leave me without a deliberate help. God will help you tonight. Thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless you. Now, let's conclude. Let's conclude in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We are drawing conclusions tonight. We are talking to God who answers prayer. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Our Father, time has come for us to take our journey. And we hear you saying, Go on your journey. When thou comest, there's an Azai you will anoint for me. There's a Jehu you will raise for me. There's an Elisha that I will bring your way. Lord, we deliberately put in our hands in your hand today that all those our lives was meant to raise for you, we will not miss them in the name of Jesus Christ. We have heard you say it is on our way. They are on our way. They are on our path. 
help us to see them in the name of Jesus Christ. Give us perspective for souls. Let not see souls as ordinary trees anymore. Help us to see a future that many could not see about them. That we may labor on their lives because they might become the deliverer of the community tomorrow. They might become the principal. They might become the vice chancellor. They might become, oh God, that evangelist that will draw in the harvest. Tonight as your servants go, I commend them to you that they will be effective. They will be fruitful. They will see your glory in the land of the living. Lord, I ask that they will have strength Strength to bring forth in the name of Jesus Christ. I plead with you, Lord, that on their journey, nothing will cut them short. None of you will have accident on your journey. When Elijah was fed without food twice, it was not for him to go and hide in a cave. It was for him to do something. This equipping that God has brought on your life in the course of this meeting, it's not for the graveyard. So you will not die, you will live. You will fulfill your quota in the name of Jesus Christ. And the things that heaven had ordained that you are the one to bring about in the kingdom of God, it shall not escape your sword in the name of Jesus. I particularly speak concerning your life concerning everything that concerns you that the Lord Almighty who has set you apart for a divine purpose He will see you through He will see you through in the name of Jesus as we stood shoulder to shoulder in this meeting we worship the Lord together we sang and we listen to God's word it is clear to us that God said there is a material here. That material that God has located in you for his vessel, for his glory, no dross will make it useless in the name of Jesus Christ. As you go from here, the Lord Almighty will sit over your head. As a refiner, he will refine you. You will shine forth as gold in the name of Jesus. From this meeting, you will become a terror to Satan. The fire of the Lord will burn so hot through you that every consumable around you will be consumed in the name of Jesus Christ. Anointing that breaks the yoke will come on your lives and on your way on your way there will be enough in your hand to anoint your Azahels there will be enough in your life to raise your Jehus and there will be enough resources in your life to be able to help Elisha to find their destiny in the name of Jesus Thank you, Father. Make your face to shine upon your people. Go with them, O oh God. Perfect all that concerns them. In the name of Jesus. Lord, for these lives that are kneeling down here, they are like those ones that say, Ah, this is the last day. This is the last minute. I have been there. Maybe they came late or maybe they have been here and the enemy occupied them. This last minute, Father, like the thief on the cross, last minute, you had mercy on him. Have mercy on these lives. Break their yokes in the name of Jesus. Give them rest in the name of Jesus. 
Heavenly Father, we trust you that we shall hear great news. Some of them will be one of those who will give testimony and say, That night, Brother Billy almost closed the meeting before I run there. And God delivered me. It shall be so for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, brethren, join hand with somebody. Let's join hands together. Let's join hands together. Let's form a net across the nation and across nations. Let's join hands together. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. We are children of the King. We are family. We are one. We are one. We are one. We are of the Father. We are joined there with the song. We are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are family. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the fellowship of the Holy Spirit Amen. go forward with you Amen. make a way for you Amen. may his presence open doors unto you Amen. may his light shine upon you Amen. may heaven defend you. Amen. May the Lord Almighty introduce you. Amen. May gates of their own accord open unto you. Amen. May everything that is necessary and sufficient for you to fulfill your destiny, may He come your way effortlessly. Amen. May you travel safe in life. Amen. And when we meet in his glory, may you never be found wanting. Amen. From this day forward. Amen. And forevermore. Amen. And let the people say, Amen. Amen. Will you give Jesus a clap of hallelujah?